Today, I would like to welcome you to the third video in a six part series, which will show you the absolute best way to capture, edit, and then upload game clips to YouTube in the highest possible quality. So they come out looking just like the clips from the professional YouTubers out there that we all enjoy watching so much. We'll be capturing game clips in 1080p, 60 FPS, both with and without chat recording, using a laptop and the Elgato HD60 game capture card. I'll be showing you how to do a fast, high quality edit and explaining which settings to use to render those game clips out in Sony Vegas, and then covering how to upload those same clips to YouTube using custom thumbnails, tags, descriptions, and the titles that you'll need for a professional result. In this third video, I'll be showing you how to record your voice with your game clips, uh, which you can use for daily vlog style gaming clips or to create tutorials just like this one. Straight up, if you watch this series from start to finish, you're gonna know everything you need to about game capturing, editing, and uploading with various setups to get some legit results. So stay locked, ask any questions or request tutorials in the comments below, crush that like button, and yeah, I hope this helps. What is currently happening YouTube? Facepalm here, your friend in Oz and NZ, bringing you reviews, tutorials, and game clips, minus the sh you can follow me on Twitter at Facepalm with a one, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to bring your game face. Let's get it done. So in the first video, I ran through the lineup of every video in this series. Instead of going through that again, you can just click one of the links on screen to take you to the other videos should you need them. I do recommend though that you watch these videos in order to get the most out of them as the setups in the later videos rely on the setups in the videos that come before them. So let's get straight into part three, how to record your voice with the Elgato HD60, best microphone and headphone setups and settings. So again, for this video, I'll be using a PS for as an example, but the same settings and rules will apply to your Xbox One or gaming PC. So to record your own voice, you're going to need a USB microphone of some description, and your goal here is to get your microphone audio signal, aka your voice, into your laptop so it can be recorded digitally. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there are really only four acceptable microphone setups here that will get you a professional result. Setup one is the one that a lot of pros go for, which is to use a USB mic like either the Blue Snowball or an Audio Technica ATR 2500 USB mic, uh, which is better quality than the, than the Snowball for around the same price. Or you can step up to the AT2020 USB mic, which is what guys like Ali A use. Uh, and saying that, some people like the Snowball look and some like the mic on a boom look. Either way, both will be more than enough for high quality results. Setup two is to use a normal microphone that doesn't have USB built in with a sound card like the Focusrite Scarlett Solo uh, 2i2 or 2i4. From my experience here though, by the time you buy the mic, buy the sound card and piss around with setting it up, it's a more expensive than a USB mic like the Blue Snowball for a very similar quality, and B can be more hassle than it is worth as this type of setup is particularly prone to driver conflicts and setup issues. Uh, you'd really only use this setup if you already have the sound card or if you already have a really nice non-USB mic that you want to use. Now, if you're on a bit of a budget, setup three on the other hand is particularly good. Here, we are again going to use a microphone that doesn't have USB built in, this time a little lav style clip on mic and we'll use it with a low cost USB to 3.5 mil adapter. This is a similar concept to using the Focusrite Scarlett sound card which is essentially a USB adapter itself but much cheaper while giving you a very decent result. Now the best little USB to 3.5 mil adapter I've found is the Logitech adapter like this one and if you want you can check the description below for a link uh, to where you can find these adapters or just search eBay for Logitech 3.5 mil to USB adapter. Uh, this method can actually save you a lot of cash as you can get a $1 lav mic off eBay from Hong Kong and the Logitech USB adapter is around 10 bucks and you can actually get a very re decent result with the setup. Also, if you do prefer this style of clip-on mic anyways, you can get something like the Rode Smart Lav for a better quality sound. But in all honesty, most people can't hear the difference between a Rode Smart Lav and a $1 eBay lav mic from Hong Kong over YouTube. Uh, also, the clip on lav 
live mics will really only pick up your voice. So you get a nice clean sounding recording as opposed to something like the Blue Snowball, which will pick up any sounds in the background as well as your voice, uh, which may actually be what you do or don't want. Again, you can check the description below for the mics I've just mentioned and pick which one you like. I would say that if you were just starting out and on a bit of a budget, this third setup is definitely the way to go. Uh, and then the fourth option is using the microphone on a wireless headphone and microphone combo uh, like the Astro A40s or Turtle Beach Stealth 400s. Here the A50s or Turtle Beach Stealth headphones will receive the game audio and then the mic on the headphones will send your voice to the Elgato HD60 software for recording alongside your game clips. Remembering here what I mentioned in the first video, for us to use wireless headphones with the PS4 and the Elgato HD60, uh, those wireless headphones have to have a USB output and an optical or TOSLINK input, which looks like this, that is connected to your PS4 by an optical cable, which looks like this. Uh, for example, the Astro A40 or A50s with, some, with the Mixamp Pro, uh, or the Turtle Beach Stealth 400s, uh, just to name a couple of different headphone setups that will work. If you're looking at buying some headphones and unsure which ones to get, check the manual online for the headphones you like and see if they have both the optical or TOSLINK and USB input and output, uh, or just ask me in the comments below and I'll help you out. Also bear in mind here that these four microphone setups are, are if you are by yourself and you're recording game clips and your voice only. If you're wanting to record your friend's voice in a party chat, then you'll need a second microphone, but I'll cover off how to set that up in this next video. Um, but for now, for the next few minutes, we are capturing game clips and recording our voice only. So in saying that, let's hook this shit up. So let's have a look at the setups we use in part one so we can have a better understanding of how this is going to work. So if you watch the video in part one, there are two possible headphone setups you could be using, either a wired headphone setup or a wireless headphone setup. And both of these setups will work for recording your own voice. So in the wired headphone setup I showed you, the game video and audio signal should be running out of the PS4 and into the HD60, where that signal will be split into two identical copies. One copy will go to the TV or monitor where our wired headphones are plugged into so we can hear the game audio, and the other copy will be sent to our laptop where we will be capturing our game clips and recording our voice. Or if you are using wireless headphones like the Astro A40s, A50s or Turtle Beach headphones, or if your TV didn't have a headphone output jack for your wired headphones, you will have this setup, which is basically the same as the wired headphone setup, except that as well as sending the game video and audio to the TV and laptop via the HD60, you are also taking that same game video and audio via an optical cable out of the PS4 and into the optical input on your stereo, Astro Mixamp or Turtle Beach USB transmitter, um, which then gets sent onto your headphones. Whichever headphone setup you are using though, the method to record your voice for each of our four possible microphone setups is really very simple. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you're using a setup like the Focusrite Scarlett sound card and mic combo is go to the manufacturer's website, i.e. Focusrite or whatever company's website that makes your sound card and download and install the drivers onto your laptop or PC as you'll need those for the sound card to run. Uh, the USB mics, Logitech adapter, Turtle Beach or Astro headphones on the other hand, they won't need the drivers as they are plug and play, which means you plug them in and they work automatically. Now all you're going to do is plug your USB mic, Logitech USB adapter mic combo, sound card mic combo, Turtle Beach USB transmitter or Astro Mixamps USB cable into a spare USB port on the laptop you are capturing your clips to. This will now send your microphone signal into your laptop to be recorded by the Elgato software. So make sure you're not plugging any of these USB mics or cables into your PS4 via USB uh, when you're trying to record your voice as that will send your microphone audio back into the PS4 and we can't record it from there with the Elgato software. If you don't have a spare USB port on your laptop, a USB 2 or 3 hub will work just fine to get you some extra ports. If this is the first time you have plugged in your USB mic or Logitech USB adapter, uh, the computer will automatically install the driver that the USB mic needs to run with your computer. So just let that finish installing. Now the hardware is set up, let's double check our PS4 is sending our 
game audio to our headphones. So head on into the PS4 settings menu and then go on down to sound and screen. Um, choose audio output settings, uh, then click on primary output port. And if you're using a wired headphone setup, set this to HDMI uh, so that our audio goes out of our PS4 into our Elgato, out of the Elgato and into the TV uh, where our headphones are plugged into. If you are using the wireless headphone setup, choose digital out optical, then select the format supported by your wireless headphones. In the case of the Astro A50s or 40s, this will be the Dolby Digital 5.1 option, but in the case of the Turtle Beach headphones, which don't support Dolby sound, you would just have the linear PCM options checked. Now let's make sure the PS4 is also sending game audio through the Elgato HD60 via our HDMI cable and into our laptop at the same time to be recorded. So head back on out to the PS4 settings menu and then go to devices menu. Select audio devices and change the output device to TV or amplifier if it's not set to that already. Now that we've got our PS4 settings configured correctly, let's make sure our laptop settings are correct as well. So go on over to your laptop and in the taskbar, right click the speaker icon and choose playback settings. If you're using the wired headphone setup, click on your laptop speakers, which will likely show up as Realtek something. Um, why do we need to use our laptop speakers as the default playback device instead of our wired headphones? Well, because the Elgato software on the laptop doesn't have a direct connection with our TV or monitor, which is where our wired headphones are plugged into. And so we will need to listen to our game clip recordings from the laptop speakers. On the other hand, if we look over to our wireless headphone setup, our laptop does have a direct connection with our wireless headphones through its USB transmitter, uh, mix amp, or the USB cable. So if you are using wireless headphones on your laptop, click on the icon that has the name of your wireless headphone, in my case, the Turtle Beach headphones, and set that as the default. This will mean that all of our audio playback, including our consoles game audio and our captured game clip audio, from the laptop will be coming through our wireless headphones. Uh, also, while we're here, quickly check the recording tab and make sure that whichever USB mic you are using is set as default also, uh, be it the USB mic, Logitech adapters mic, the Focusrite sound cards mic, or the wireless uh, headphones mic like the Astros or the Turtle Beach. Now, if you're using one of the options that has more than one mic input on it, like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or 2i4, um, by default, your microphone audio will only play back out of the left speaker. But we want it to come out both speakers so it sounds nice and centered when we're listening back to it. So what we need to do is right click on the sound card you are using, in my case, the Scarlett 2i4, and choose properties. Then click on the advanced tab. Uh, in the default format section, you're going to see a drop down menu where it lists your sound card's default audio format. This is going to be set to two channel, then uh, whatever the default sample rate and bit depth your sound card uses. The two channel part means stereo because the Focusrite sound card is stereo, but as our microphone is a mono device, or in other words, a one channel device, we need to set this to one of the one channel options. Which one channel option do we choose? Well, see how my default options say 60 bit 44,100 hertz CD quality, well, I'm going to want the, to select the one channel version of that same sample rate and bit depth. In this case, the one channel 16 bit 44,100 hertz CD quality option. The reason I mention this is that your sound card might be set to two channel 16 bit 48,000 hertz by default, and in that case, you would choose the one channel 16 bit 48,000 hertz option. Now that that's set up, uh, when we record our game clips with our voice and play it back through the laptop speakers, it will all come out through both speakers. Nice. So now that that's all set up, open up the Elgato software. Go up here to the Global Game Capture HD Preferences menu and head on over to the Sharing tab and then tick the Live Commentary Audio box underneath Export to Separate Files. Uh, as I explained in the last video, we tick this box because when we have captured a clip we like and hit the MP4 button under the Edit tab, we want to keep our voice recording separate from the game clip we, we recorded. Uh, this lets us remove any bad mic sounds or background noise that we don't want later on when we get to editing our montage together. Uh, if you check that same box underneath mix following tracks to exports, your voice and all the game clip audio would be permanently mashed into one and you
you wouldn't be able to change the level of your voice if it was too loud in some parts, for instance. Uh, once that's done, come on out to the main window and click the live commentary button at the bottom, which tells the Elgato software to start syncing audio with your game clips. Uh, then click the little speaker icon here, which stops the audio from coming out of the speakers on your laptop while you're recording through your microphone. We do this because if there is sound coming out of your laptop speakers at the same time that you are using your microphone, then that laptop speaker sound will be picked up by your microphone as well as your voice and make the whole thing sound shit. Uh, when you want to play back your clips with sound, just click the speaker icon again and sound will come out your laptop speakers. Now, go back up to the live commentary section. Uh, if this is not expanded, you can expand it by clicking this little triangle here. And in the little drop down menu here, select the USB microphone that you have plugged in. Now, when you talk into your mic, you will see this little bar fluctuate. And keep in mind here that green is good, yellow is okay, and red means rubbish and bad sound quality. Uh, you'll also see the game audio meter fluctuate as well, but don't worry too much about that. Your voice will be sent out separately, which is what we want. Uh, if your voice is constantly hitting the red, then use this little dial to ease back on the volume a bit. Leave the automatically reduce other audio tracks box unticked, as we don't want our game clip uh, volume going up and down whenever we talk. Ticking this box means that when you talk, the game clip volume will dip so your voice can be heard over the game audio. But as we are keeping our voice and game clip audio separate anyway, it's best to just leave this to unticked. Um, now, game away as you usually would and use the techniques I showed you uh, in, the first, in the last video to capture some game clips as well as your recorded voice. And once we have a clip we like, we can go on over to the edit tab, select our clip to be rendered out to MP4 and hit the MP4 button. Once that is finished, the window will pop up where your game clips are being saved to and you'll see two files here. One is the video and audio from the game clip we just captured and the other file is your voice audio by itself. So at this point you could take both of those into your video editing software and edit them together into a montage or whatever and they will nicely sync. But that's a part I'll cover in the next video. So now you should have everything you need connected to correctly record your voice with your game clips using a variety of mics or wireless headphone setups. And then the next video I'm going to show you how to add all your friends voices and record the party chat and a link will pop up in a second to take you directly to that video. So on that note don't forget to smash the like button and comment below and we'll see you in the next one. Peace! Thanks for watching today's video just remember you can follow me on Twitter at Bass Palm with a one not an L. As for here on YouTube if you like what you find then like comment and subscribe but don't forget to bring your game face. Face Palm out.